In the Adapt Design step, pop-up notifications may appear during the various stages of design adaptation. You can always choose to let the software make corrections automatically, or you can do it by yourself and press Accept. By enabling the distance map, you can see the distance of the antagonist from the splint surface. The Smooth or Remove tool will help remove material in all areas that are not needed nor relevant for a given splint type. In the Deprogrammer case, with generic offset having been used to cover most surfaces, you can see the splint geometry seems bumpy or irregular. A weak Add and Smooth tool with a large diameter will help smoothen some of these surfaces in an effective way, without reducing the material strength. This will result in a geometry that is easier to polish and facilitates hygiene maintenance. To start refining the contact pattern on the surface of the bite block, the articulator needs to be set up by disabling the Guide by Incisal pin, and also enabling Guide by Design. You will see the initial static contacts appearing in the form of red collision lines. The distance map only shows proximity, not contacts. If all the occluding teeth do not produce collision marks, collision marks can be produced by gently adding material on the expected contact areas until the desired static contacts are achieved. Now run articulation by pressing the green play icon. It is advisable to make the antagonist visible. Depending on the occluding teeth chosen, you may check that there are no contacts emerging from the canines in lateral otrusion and mediotrusion. Lateral otrusion and mediotrusion contacts are shown as green and blue, and retrusion and protrusion are black. Also, depending on the occluding teeth chosen, the central incisors in this case, you may want to sculpt away any involvement from lateral incisors in protrusive movements. Rerun articulation to check the effect of any sculpting done. You can now fine-tune protrusive contacts by locking lateral otrusion and mediotrusion and running articulation. To establish even protrusive contacts from all occluding teeth, you may have to add material and rerun the articulation multiple times. Generally, adding material gently on the desired areas and running the articulation immediately after will result in a controlled outcome. You may need to add some wax to the outer rim of the bite block to have enough material to antagonize the incisors in maximum protrusion. You can manually use the protrusion slider to evaluate the need for further support. Also note that in cases where you have more than two lower incisors occluding on the bite plane, that if a lower incisor incisal edge is significantly below the occlusal plane, you may consider excluding it from the protrusive pattern. Possible posterior contacts forming on the surface of the deprogrammer need to be evaluated and removed. If you find posterior collisions, you can choose to remove material locally and rerun articulation to check if the collision has been removed. If the material removal results in a violation of the minimum thickness value, you can choose to automatically correct or accept the violation. You can also return to the bite configuration step to increase the interocclusal distance. Alternatively, you can choose to leave a local minimum thickness violation if, in your opinion, the violation is not critical. Sometimes you may notice that a posterior collision may result from the maximum extension of the protrusive movement, sliding the jaw over the bite block. You may then consider if the maximum protrusion applies to the case at hand. It is worth remembering that it is a process of adding, removing and smoothing, along with running articulation to assess the impact that will help you with adapting the design to your desired outcome. To check the final outcome, to check if the splint is going to work in the intended way, you can toggle the Guide by Design button on. Now the movements will be guided by the splint's geometry. Then run all movements guided by design and observe 
that the desired contact pattern is drawn on the surface of the bite block. When you're satisfied with the outcome, press Next.